forgive, we must stop and give thanks to our great God who has blessed us so richly, allowing us to be here this morning in his house to worship him in spirit and in truth. How's everyone this morning? Great, 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 great. Glad to hear it. Um, the, uh, I want to thank uh, uh, the church here uh, for allowing me to come and, and be a part of this. Uh, last year, um, I was scheduled to be here, uh, but my wife had had uh, some surgery. She had surgery again this year, too. <laughs> but uh, she just had surgery, and she was having some, some complications from that surgery. So we were going back and forth to the doctor and having to be there just about all day long. So uh, I wasn't able to make it. I apologize for that. I missed it. Uh, but I'm here this year, and I say that, uh, that you all have put me first in the morning. Uh, because I know that you all think I'm a long-winded preacher <laughs> and you're giving me a deadline so we're going to get this thing done yeah. I will get out of the way <laughs> um, the sisters when they have a, have their sisters day or whatever they always had something called uh, uh, icebreakers icebreakers you know? and I would, I would listen you know, to to some of those icebreakers that they have. I said, why would they have icebreakers? Well, let's get everybody to loosen up, right? right. Loosen up. I'm going to give you an icebreaker this morning. Um, I said, I got two of them, so which one I want? Um, uh, let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. This, this is going to be kind of corny, but it's an icebreaker, all right? My subject is a uh, selfless neighbor. So I'm going to give a, a neighbor icebreaker this morning. Um, Man said he lived in, in, a, in an apartment house. And uh, about four o'clock in the morning, uh, he was listening to some music, and, and all of a sudden, his neighbor started beating on the wall. Beating on the wall. And his neighbor says, uh, uh, Respect, please. And the man said, Well, I'm not that much into Aretha Franklin, but this is for you. <laughs> That's the point. I have another one. I, don't okay. I think you can, you can leave that one on there. The other one. <laughs> anyway, let's go to the Bible. Uh, Luke chapter 10, and uh, I'll be remiss if I don't um, uh, uh, talk about uh, the, the congregation that, uh, that I serve, uh, the Central Church of Christ in Chiefland. I want to uh, thank uh, our members for, some of our members for being here this morning. Uh, to support us. Uh, Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Uh, and my lesson comes from <coughs> verses 30 through 37. Uh, but I want to start up around verse 25. And I looked at the schedule and I, I had to make sure that I wasn't stepping on someone else's uh, topic. But I didn't see it. Uh, so uh, I guess I'm free to go on and do this. So I want to start around uh, verse number 25. The Bible says, Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tested him, saying, Teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, What is written in the law? What is the reading of it? So he answered and said, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered rightly, do this and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, said to Jesus, and who is my neighbor? That's so much meat in there. Mm -hmm. You all only giving me 40, what, how many minutes for okay. <laughs> but but, but, but we, we'll deal with a little bit of it. Anyway, uh, this guy uh, did not ask Jesus the question to get the answer. What he was trying to do was test Jesus. You see, Jesus was not liked by the elite, the teachers, and the, the, the Sanhedrin. Uh, they hated Jesus. Because in, in their minds, Jesus was taking power away from them. Mm -hmm. And some people, when they get a hold of power, mm -hmm. they don't want to let it go. Mm -hmm. uh, you know about some of those, those people, you know, some of them are elders and some of them are preachers, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they don't want to let it go. And, and so, so they hated Jesus 
for this. And so they begin to ask Jesus these questions, and, uh, and he began to ask Jesus these questions to try to trap him into something. You know, looking back now, that's stupid. You can't trap God. <laughs> but anyway, people try, and they still try to do that today. Amen. Mm -hmm. They are. Yeah. So he said, uh, who is my neighbor? And so Jesus decided to use this parable um, uh, to tell him who his neighbor is. Okay? And so Jesus began in verse number 30, and he began to talk about a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves who stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance, a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he, pressed, he passed by on the other side. I got a sermon called Passing By on the Other Side. You might have heard it. Yeah. It's old. It's an old sermon. Uh, oh, we're not going to bother that one, though. Likewise, a Levite arrived at the place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Oh, we're going to get back to this in a minute. But here's where we want to go. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, he had compassion. Now, who is my neighbor? Here's what the Jews was taught, that their neighbors was only other Jews. No one else. If you was a Gentile or whatever, you were not their neighbor. This is what the Pharisees had taught the people. This was perverted. Jesus knew how perverted this was. That's why he used this particular parable about the Samaritan. Now what's so, so, so significant about the Samaritan? Well, the Jews didn't like the Samaritans either. You see? Um, all this stuff started way back when, when, the, when the Jews came out of captivity and, and uh, uh, Samaritans were those who, who uh, was uh, 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 what we might call uh, biracial folk. Mm -hmm. What happened is that uh, uh, the Assyrians, when they captured Samarita, Samaria, those people that was left there, the Assyrians sent foreigners in to fill in or uh, to live in those lands. And they married the Jews who was left in, in the land. And they became the Samaritans. Now, to the Jews, they claimed that they, were, well, they weren't pure bloody Jews anymore, you see. All right? And so when they came back from captivity, uh, the Samaritans came and said, well, we're going to help you rebuild. And the Jews said, no, you're not, because you're not Jewish. You're foreigners now. You're Gentiles. So you're not going to help us. And so the bad blood started then. Now what happened then after that? Well, uh, whenever a, a, uh, a Jewish person uh, living in Judea, whenever they got into trouble or they got excommunicated or, or they, they did some, th uh, some, some stealing or whatever, uh, they would go to Samaria. And the Samarians would take them in. It wouldn't allow the Jews to come and take them out. And so that only fueled the bad blood between the Jews and the Samaritans. Now, here's the whole thing, you see. They were all kinfolk. They was all they were all relatives, you see. And but they hated each other. Hmm? Now, in this particular parable, Jesus used the Samaritan to prove something to uh, these Jews about their biases and they needed to get out of this stupid notion that your only baby you have, the only baby you have is other Jews. As a matter of fact, neighbors are the whole world Amen. with people. Not just the ones who live next door, not just the ones who go, go to the same congregation we go to, you see, but the whole world is our neighbors. Hmm? Now let me let me throw something at you here. Brother Brian talked a little bit last night about uh, about name calling and things of that nature. Uh, 
Uh, my cousin, she's back there, she and I, we were raised by some very strict people. Strict people. We had some, we had some, uh, some mean, mean aunts. <laughs> <laughs> our grandma, our grandmother, she was, she was the meanest of all of them. Amen. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and they didn't, they, they didn't allow name calling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they, didn't allow, they would, they would, they would, they would, they would beat you to where? <laughs> <laughs> No name calling then, you see. Right. They let you know that there's nobody better than you, and you're no better than anyone else. Right. You're all the same folk. Right. And we grew up that way. That's why we don't have a problem with this foolishness that people have. Talking about races. Yeah. There's only one race, folk. Yeah. It's the human race. Yeah. Yeah. All this stuff talking about black people and white people, that stuff was started in the 1600s by the British. Before then, people were called by the nation that they lived in. Right. Let me give you this. When we went to, uh, my wife and I, we went to, um, to the Bahamas um, back in uh, 2018, I believe that's when we were there. We went to the Nassau Bahamas. That's where my, my biological grandfather comes from. Uh, so we went to, to, to the Bahamas. When we got off the ship, those Bahamians called us Americans. How dare they? they <laughs> you know something? Uh, Everywhere we went, we was Americans. Uh, hmm? They didn't use race. Uh, That's what we are, folks. Oh, we are one race. Amen. That's not my lesson, but I figured I better throw that one in because I might not get another chance. Yeah. So we need to stop that foolishness. Amen. Black Amen. people, white people, Asian and, and uh, Hispanic, stop that foolishness. I think mean, Jesus told that, well, let me go on this. <laughs> Get off with my lesson. So Jesus used uh, this Samaritan then uh, to let these people know uh, that you are not following the law of God. So let's look at this Samaritan. This, this, let's back up. Let's look at this now for, for a moment. I think, well, I'm going to do this. I got here. Let's go, let's go back, look, back up here. The Bible says, uh, in verse number 31, now by chance a certain priest came down that road, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. A priest now, mm -hmm. a person who is supposed to be holy and righteous, mm -hmm. saw the man and went by on the other side. Like I'm not going to get involved with this. Hmm? Uh, this is not my business. Let someone else handle this. You see. <laughs> but still, he's going to go down to Jerusalem and talk religion. When he didn't show religion. Mm -hmm. Well, you do know that religion is not something that you get. It's something that you do, right? <laughs> so he wasn't doing religion. Let me get out of here and go on about my business. Hmm? Then it said that a Levite came down that way. Now what the Levite did, he went over and he looked at the guy. Hmm? And then he passed by on the other side. He wasn't stopping help either. Here's a guy who worked around the temple or before they even built the temple, he worked, worked around the, the tabernacle, you see, and did religious things. And he wasn't holy enough to help this poor soul. How often do we pass up the opportunity to do religion? How often do we pass up the opportunity to help out our fellow man. How often do we say, well, let someone else do it? I got a call one day. It was on a Saturday. I got a call one day. Uh, uh, one, of the, uh, one of the brothers uh, had been involved, had gotten involved in, in an accident. And so I got a call from another brother, and he told me that this brother had been involved in an accident, and they were taking him to the hospital. I said, oh, okay. I said, what you've done? about it. He said, I called you. 
No, I'm not going to lie about it. I'm going to repay you for you going to the hospital to see me. That's what he think anyway, you see. <laughs> so he pays an opportunity. Let someone else do it. Hmm? That happens all the time. This Samaritan now, somebody that the Jews didn't like, and of course I have to throw it the other way too, they didn't like the Jews either, okay? They had no deals with each other, uh, according to uh, the lady at the well, John chapter four, verse number nine. Jews and, and Samaritans have no deals with each other, but this Samaritan, he showed compassion on this man. There was four, five things. Five things that the Samaritan did with this man uh, and uh, to show uh, compassion for him and show love that he had uh, for his fellow man. Well, the first thing he did, this Samaritan, uh, he went to the poor man. Mm -hmm. Not like me right now, but he went to the poor man and he actually, when he went to the poor man, he actually examined the, the, the poor man. He examined him to see what his injuries were. The Levite went over there, he looked down at him, but he didn't examine him, you see. Uh, he didn't care if he was uh, living or dead. But the, the first thing he did, he went to him, he examined him. The second thing he did, the Bible says, is that he bound up the man's wound and he poured oil and wine on his wounds. Now, now the Bible said that, that the thieves beat this man. There could have been a chance that the thieves uh, would come back and maybe catch the Samaritan there. But see, he didn't think about those things, or he didn't, he didn't allow those things to influence his decision to help this person. He took time out. Let me say that again. He took time out to run the aid to this person. I was picking up anything on this, you see. Because Jesus wanted us, Jesus wanted, he wanted us to, to get something out of this. Oftentimes we don't take time out to do anything. If it's gonna inconvenience me, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm gonna go about my business. Took time out to bound up the man's wounds, pour oil on him, wash him up, soothe him up as much as he could, clothe him up, try to bring the man some ease, you know, to, to, to uh, uh, get him out of pain, whatever. The third thing he did, the Bible says he set the man on his own animal. He set the man on his animal, and he, the Samaritan, led the animal with the man on it. In other words, he walked. Amen. And the poor man was on the donkey. Hmm? Oh my goodness. He walked. He walked. Hmm? And let the man ride. Hmm. Again, I know one was paying him to do this. Hmm? Some people won't do anything unless you pay them. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of amazing. The other day, the other day, uh, uh, last Tuesday, I think it was, last Tuesday when I was when I was I was sitting in my office and, and I was putting this 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 lesson together, you know, uh, thinking about uh, what I was going to say and, and and put this lesson together. And there was a knock on my door. There was a knock on my door. Now, listen, I live in the country. <laughs> I live in the country. Now. Now, where I live, across the street from us, is about 50 acres, 50 wooded acres. Mm -hmm. and, and at the south end of that 50 acres is a pond. And what happens, you see, of what used to happen is that, that the, the kids, they would go down, you see, they made a trail through there, they would go down to that pond, you see, and they would take their, their ATVs down to that pond, and they would take their pickup trucks down to that pond, and they mud buggies and they would go down to that pond and they would they would mud bar, you see, you see. And and, and so and so uh, uh, something happened one night. It was one Saturday night. Uh looked out the window and and, and and an ambulance was going down the trail. 
And the deputy sheriff was going down the trail. Someone had gotten down there and he had gotten into some kind of, some kind of altercation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the next thing I know, the lady who owned the land, she had, she had signs put up, no trespassing. She didn't want anybody else down. But the knock came at my door. And these two strange people was at my door. And they said, listen, um, uh, we're over here next to this pond, and we can't get our car started. And I got to thinking, y'all was trespassing. You know? <laughs> now, now, I could have started preaching this to them. <laughs> You're breaking the law. <laughs> trespassing. Mm -hmm. Those signs are up there for a reason, to keep people out. Yeah. But they went down there, and now their car wouldn't start. Mm -hmm. Two strangers. Never seen them before, they don't live out there. Hmm? Now, I could have made all sorts of excuses as to hmm. why hmm. I'm not going to help you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I said, you know what? That would be hypocritical on my part. Not to help these people, but stand up here this morning and tell you all about helping your neighbor. Yeah. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> And so I went and helped him out with him and, and got the thing jumped off for him, you know, and, and, uh, and the man tried to, uh, the young guy tried to offer me some money. I said, no, 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 uh, because I might need help myself one day. Okay. Just want you all to talk to myself to get out of here and go on about your business. <laughs> some people, they won't do a thing for you unless you pay them. Mm -hmm. And they're all about that, that money, and not about love in their hearts. The fourth thing that the man did, the Samaritan, he took the man to an inn. And when he got there, he paid for the room or the bed and whatever. Sometimes those inns are just a big room itself, you see. We don't know what kind of inn this was. The Bible doesn't say. It could have been just one big room, or it could have been several different rooms. But whatever it was, he paid for uh, being there for the man and himself, his own money. Mm -hmm. Took the man to the end, uh, and uh, 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 found a room for the man, and took care of the man while he was there. Now, we don't know. Uh, if he was planning on staying to the end when he started out on his journey, but we know that's where he ended up at this particular time. Hmm? The fifth thing he did, he treated this man as if he was his own child or his own relative. You see, we, 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 we like to we, we treat our relatives or our, you know, uh, our relations better than we treat the other folks sometimes, right? Mm -hmm. Hmm? Yeah. Uh, but he treated this man like he was his own relative. The next morning he got up to leave and he left money with the landlord so that the landlord then could use it to take care of this person. Still do not know who this person is. Mm. There's nowhere in the Bible that it said that he told him what his name is. Was that important? Right. Obviously not. Hmm? So, uh, when my daughter was uh, was a teenager, when my daughter was a teenager, seeing and the phone would ring, and there's a there's a there's a male voice on the other end of the phone, you know, and they wanted to speak to Natasha. Hmm? My first thing is say, well, who are you? And then who are your folks? <laughs> Yeah. See, that was going to determine if you were going to speak to Natasha or not. Mm -hmm. see, oftentimes, you see, they didn't get past the questioning. Because their folk, or they were somebody that she had no business bothering with. I had already made that up in my mind. There was very few people who was going to get to talk to Natasha mm -hmm. if they come through her daddy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we need to find out who these folk are. This was important to this man who 
this man was or who his folk was. So he left money. And he told the man, Lord, he said, listen, if you use this up on him, when I come back through here, what I'll do is give you what you spent on him. This man showed true religion. This man showed who truly was his neighbor. Now, almost there, almost there. Now, <laughs> let me throw this one in. You see, this man was robbed. This man was stripped. This man was left miserable. See, this parable applied to us as well. Guess what Satan does to us? Satan, he strips us, he robs us, he wounds us, he causes all sorts of mischief to us, and it takes Jesus to come and to wrap us up and clean up all our wounds. Amen. We, by nature, was half dead. Mm -hmm. Left half dead in our sins. But thank God that Jesus loves us. Thank God that Jesus decided that we all are precious in his sight. Mm -hmm. Now, just call I got a lot more to go here, but I'm not, <laughs> my time's up. <laughs> and we're going to talk about this. You and I, you, you, we're going to talk about this. You give me this kind of lesson here, and then you give me a deadline. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> but, <laughs> but we appreciate you all. Thank you all so very, very much.